Now is the time to worship the Creator of heaven and earth. Now is the time to glorify His name. Now is the time to sing our hearts out. Now is the time to surrender everything and worship the one and only God.
Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. From the dead, Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is living in his church. Jesus is living in his church. Good morning, everyone. Jesse and I want to welcome you all for this very first Sunday service of 2021. 2020 is over and now we are standing at the beginning of 2021. I just ask a question to Jesse to find out her view about how was 2020. The past year 2020 has been unprecedented. The onslaught of coronavirus uh, left us all in uh, experiencing, which we never experienced before, the world's strict lockdown, pain, losses of various kind, and fear and anxiety uh, caused many of us uh, to go through a lot of hardships. But in the middle of all that, a lot of good things happened too. Quite a few people reconnected with their families, friends, neighbors. They found out new skills and talents maybe. Above all else, there was uh, God who turned many hearts towards Him. And uh, during this time, many heroes emerged. So, you know, so appreciative of them. They put their life to risk and served humanity. And in our personal lives, we faced uh, challenges, health challenges. And when Ben was ill, it was emotionally very hard for me. But I was uh, not knowing everything was going on well in my life before that but during that time uh, you know God softened my heart and I had to humble before God on my knees and it was good for me to uh, go through that because it brought a lot of renewal revival in my walk with God and our ever faithful God uh, kept us safe protected us sustained us healed us and here we are already entered into the new year 2021 looking forward not knowing what is going to bring, but our ever-present God is there to give us hope and encouragement. I fully agree with Jesse that last year, that is year 2020, was full of uh, anxiety, pain and suffering of mankind when we looked around. But now we are at the beginning of uh, 2021, hoping for best from our God and He is going to deliver us. 
I want to sh I want to read a scripture which is encouraging uh, for all of us from Book of Philippians chapter four uh, from verse uh, six onwards. It says, "Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus." Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or, or praiseworthy, think about such things. So the scriptures, through scriptures, God encourages us to focus on positive things and leave our anxieties in His hands. Let's pray and dedicate this year and this service into God's hand. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to talk to you, knowing that you are the God who created this universe, you created all of us, and uh, Lord, uh, you have you have blessed us in many ways in the past, Father. We know that when we were thinking everything is gone, everything is lost, but you started something new, so that Lord, we could see, uh, we could see the light of the day and get encouraged in our life, Father. Thank you for being our Father. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the creator of this universe. You know everything and we want to offer ourselves, our whole church into your hands. You take care of us, Father. We saw miracles even last year. Even, uh, Lord, when uh, people were sick, you touched and healed them. Healed them, many of them. Lord, we are grateful for that, Father. And uh, Lord, you have protected the orphans. You have protected uh, those who needed you and you have guided us, Father. Thank you for this wonderful time. As we, uh, as we are going to worship you through this service, we offer this service into your hands. Lord, uh, let your name be glorified. And every scripture, everything what is uh, told today, we will take it personally into our hearts. And Lord, uh, be a better Christian, Father. Thank you for everything. We, give, we praise and worship you and offer, you, offer ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Yeah. Amen. Wish you a happy new year to all of you, brothers and sisters. This is the time we remember Jesus' sacrifice and the new life that God offered us through that sacrifice. The spring festival or the Chinese New Year is, mo is the most important traditional festival in China and it is celebrated for 16 days. Several days before the New Year celebration, Chinese families give their home a thorough cleaning. This cleaning is called sweeping the dust and represents a wish to put away old things, bid farewell to the old year and welcome the new year. Once they enter the new year, Chinese do not clean the house the first two days of the new year. To do so, it's belie believed to sweep away good luck. Not only in China, in many parts of the world, including India, people clean their homes out of such many traditional festivals. When the Apostle Paul wrote to the believers at Corinth, he asked them to give a thorough cleaning, not to their homes, but to their lives. Thorough cleaning, not for good luck, but to please God. He told them to parch out the old east. Let's turn our Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We will read verse 7 and 8. Get rid of the old east, so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ... Our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread, leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Referring to Exodus chapter 12, verse 14 to 17, Paul used the Jewish feast of Passover and unleavened bread as a backdrop for this statement. Passover was an annual festival for Israelites to remember God's deliverance from Egypt. East was a symbol of sin and corruption. Israelites were commanded to sweep all of it out of the house. East was to be removed from Jewish homes to celebrate these festivals. The Lord's Supper is our Passover remembrance of our new life and freedom from the slavery of sin. It's a, it's a festival for all of us to remember how God 
deliver us from spiritual death christ is our passover lamb the perfect sacrifice for our sin because he has delivered us from the slavery of sin we should have nothing to do with the sins of the past that is the old east lord supper that we take part every week is a great opportunity for us to check the cleanliness of our lives and patch how the east if any from our lives as we enter the new year i believe all of us took took time to look back on the previous year what went well what did not what were the lessons learned besides corona if you have not had a ch- chance to reflect on last year i encourage you to do so because it is important to look back but new year new year's day is also day when we look forward we look ahead with eager anticipation of what god has in store for us in 2021 to me this is a good illustration for what we are doing when we take part in the last supper we look backward to our past and we see jesus dying on a cross for our sins and his blood that was shed covers us and we are forgiven because he died the death that we deserve we live by faith in the finished work of christ on the cross but that's only half of the picture as bible says in first corinthian chapter 11 26 for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes here is the other half of the picture when we take part in lord's supper we are looking forward with the eyes of faith and proclaiming the lord's death until he returns as we take part in communion let us be grateful for another year that god has given and let us ensure to patch out the east from our lives and live a life of righteousness and celebrate the holiness that only jesus can bring through his sacrifice this time let's pray for the bread and wine our father in heaven thank you so much father for this day that we all could come together and uh, celebrate communion father lord uh, thank you so much for keeping all of us safe lord uh, throughout last year father god the fear of corona that second many of us father that took many lives father a father we are grateful that you kept us safe lord uh, thank you so much for giving us another year father lord uh, as we enter this new year father god i pray that we all of us look inside we all of us reflect on the previous year father lord we all of us ensure that we remove the east from our life father and live a life father life of righteousness live a life father that brings clarity father lord as we take part in communion god help us to take a decision not to leave any any east in our life father but lord to continue to live our life that will bring clarity father thank you so much for your sacrifice on the cross thank you so much for taking away the the pain from our life father thank you so much for freeing us from the slavery of sin father and giving us the life of freedom thank you so much for giving us one more year that we could live with faith father we could look forward with eyes of faith father thank you so much god for this time that we all could come together and take part in communion we give this time into your hand and pray everything in your son jesus name amen
You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Love to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in
Happy New Year, my dear brothers and sisters. 2021 is upon us. And for our first Sunday sermon of the year, we're going to take a break from the Book of Matthew series and continue on the following week. Many of us have started the new year in prayer. This is what we need more than anything else as we begin the year and as we continue through the year. Personally, 2020 has been one of the most consistent I have been in my prayer life. And I'm so grateful for the well-maintained graveyard near my home where I can spend time alone with God for anywhere from half an hour to two to three hours. I know many of us have had great heart-changing times praying in the graveyard. Yet I know I still need to grow in this area of my life. We all know that prayer is important. We know that it is our greatest privilege. We know that it plays such a key role in the spiritual battle that we are in. But if you're anything like me, when it comes to practice, it is a struggle. Distractions, discouragement, other demands for time often get in the way. And so to start our lesson, I would like to share a few things that Jesus taught about prayer to help us in our times of prayer. It has been said, what a man is alone on his knees before God, that he is and nothing more. As we head into the new year, one of the goals that we all can have is to grow in our prayer life. Now, I'm not just talking about the quantity or the frequency of our prayer, but also the depth and intimacy of our prayer. In Luke 11, the disciples noticed Jesus praying and were so inspired watching him that they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. I'm sure Jesus must have been so delighted to hear his disciples ask that question. Jesus goes on to share with them a pattern for prayer that we often call the Lord's Prayer. But more accurately, it should be called the Disciples' Prayer. Let's go and read from Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 13, where we find another account of the same prayer. It reads, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing on the synagogues and on the streets, corners, to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. For we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation or testing, but deliver us from evil. What Jesus makes very clear firstly in this is that we do not pray to show people our spirituality. And so we don't need to change our tone and use fancy words or to sound more spiritual. Prayer is a time for us to communicate with our Heavenly Father. It, it's a two-way communication. Since God our Father knows what we need, in fact, He knows what we need better than us. And so prayer should not just be us talking, but it's us coming away from our time with God with more clarity about what we really need and an assurance that He is able to meet all of our needs. And for this to happen, we need to pray the way Jesus taught. This prayer is a pattern for all disciples to follow. Of course, not just repeating these lines, but reflecting the attitudes, the thoughts, and the desires that are expressed in this prayer. Now, maybe you're thinking, I already know this prayer. Or maybe you feel that your prayer life is going well. But I want to encourage you to once again examine your prayer life in light of what Jesus is teaching us. Because every prayer we pray should in some way 
be like the pattern that we see here. You know, when we analyze light, we find that it is made of seven colors of the spectrum. Now, when we analyze a disciple's prayer, we also notice that in this passage that prayer is made of seven activities. And these include, firstly, approaching God in adoration and trust. Verse 9, our Father. And so we see each other as brothers and sisters. The second activity that we, we observe in this prayer is acknowledging His work as the Creator and His worth in praise and worship. In verses 9 and 10, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, God is not like any father, but our perfect heavenly Father. Hallowed be Your name. The name of God describes everything that he is and we want his name to be great and our name to be less and this prayer helps us your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven you know our desires as we pray this prayer are also for his kingdom to grow and it's not about us building our kingdom we want to surrender and dedicate our lives to His will, which is far better than anything that we can will for ourselves. And this is how we experience heaven on earth. The third activity we observe here is asking that needs be met for ourselves and others. Verse 11, give us each day our, give us, not just give me, our daily bread. Where the first part of this prayer is about God being honored through our lives, the second part is just us coming to God with our daily needs. We, we learn to, to trust and be content in whatever situation we're in because we prayed and believe God will provide for our daily needs. We can then be focused on serving Him wholeheartedly. And fourthly, as we continue to bring our needs before God, we admit our sin and we seek forgiveness. Verse 12, and forgive our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. You know, it's so easy to be deceived about sin that is in our lives. It's so easy to see other sin and be blind to our own sins. David asked God to test him and examine his heart and his mind. Psalm 26, verse 2. You know, one way we can avoid being deceived about our own hearts is having people in our lives that we can be honest and open with. Do we have that in our lives? Maybe for this year, it could be another goal that we strive for. We also ask here for a merciful heart towards those who have sinned against us because we are so aware of how much mercy has been shown to us. You know, only those who grant forgiveness will receive it. Matthew 6, verse 14. You know, sin here is described as debts. We keep falling short and fail to pay such a huge debt. And so we see our need for forgiveness every day. And so we pray for it. You know, last March, as the pandemic was just starting, Jacob, our uncle, who is Samson's father, was diagnosed with bone marrow cancer as he was going through um, his time of chemo. It was so amazing to see his heart open to studying the Bible. Now, because of his condition, we had to take many precautions while studying with him uh, in the hospital to prevent him from getting any infection. The most moving part for me was when he confessed his sins. These were things that he had never spoken about openly to anyone. He recognized that though he had been going to church his whole life, he was not right with God because of the debt that he needed to clear with God. He had to, we had to quickly then um, arrange uh, and quietly, of course, so 
the hospital people were not aware, that we arranged for a children's pool in the hospital room. We filled it with hot water, and then we carried him and baptized him for the forgiveness of all of his sins. What a joy it was for him to finally be set free from his debt with God. But you know, sadly, last week, um, uncle passed away. And uh, we miss him dearly, but what an assurance that we have that death has been swallowed up in victory. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54. You know, the fifth activity that we observe in this prayer is arguing with God for blessing. That's right, you heard me right. Just as Jacob in Genesis 22 verse 13 wrestled with God you know our prayer here according to verse 13 is lead us not into temptations or tests now one of the activities I enjoy with my kids is arguing with them now I know that sounds strange but of course it's casual arguments um, but it's the only time that we get to have conversations with each other um, but at the end of it, we actually come away from it hearing each other and correcting some of the misconceptions. Often it's me who has to do the correcting uh, of my misconceptions. But as a result, we get more connected. God loves to be argued with. You know, Jesus wrestled with God at Gethsemane when, when he was tempted to deny the cross. He felt it was too much. And he pleaded with God, take it away. But in prayer, he found the strength to face the test. He told his disciples, watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. Brothers and sisters, are we aware of the temptations and dangers within us and around us? Do we see and know that unless God acts to provide for our daily needs, and to pardon today's sin, and to protect you in today's temptations, that you are lost? Pray that you will not be led into temptation, but that he would deliver us from evil, because we cannot do it with our own strength. The sixth activity uh, that we learn from this prayer is accepting God whatever situation he has put us in. You know, traditionally, um, and in earlier versions of the, of the scriptures, this prayer ended with a doxology, which is basically saying a praise to God for his glory. And it ends with, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And so we ask our Heavenly Father for provisions, for pardon, and for protection and we are confident that he is able to do it. And so we praise him. The more that we praise him, the more passion that we have to pray. And the more that we pray, the more we have reason for praise rather than complain. And finally and seventhly, the activity we see here is adhering or holding on to God in faithfulness through thick and thin. I know this is what many of us did as we finished uh, you know, the, the last year with all of the challenges. But the last part of this prayer uh, and of the traditional doxology says, forever and ever, amen. You know, amen, that word expresses not just a wish, but a committed confidence. It means, so be it. I'm confident what I have prayed for will happen. This year, let us ask the Lord to teach us to pray. Let us approach God in adoration and trust. Let us acknowledge His work as Creator and His worth in praise and worship. Let us ask that needs be met for ourselves and for others. Let's admit our sin and Seek forgiveness daily. 
Let's learn to argue with God for a blessing as we face our tests. And let's accept from God whatever situation that He has put in us. And hold on, adhere to God in faithfulness through thick and thin. You know, as we learn to pray the disciples' prayer, we will learn how to live the disciples' life. For Jesus' sake. Amen. You know, last year, uh, we introduced Vision 2025. And our theme for, the, for, for this vision was all to know God and to make God known to all. Our mission statement. This describes why our church exists. What is the main purpose of our church? The mission statement is to guide our decisions, our priorities, our actions, our responsibilities as we build the Bangalore church. Now, connected to this, we also described what our values are as a church, our core beliefs and values. And I would just like to remind or to, to um, say them out to us as we begin the year. You know, firstly, we believe the Bible is the word of God and we are committed to living in obedience to it. Secondly, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Jesus is the way of salvation, and we're committed to the Lordship of Jesus. Thirdly, we're committed to a relationship with God through personal and congregational worship, our times together and our personal times. Fourthly, we're committed to the great commission that is given by Jesus to Go and make disciples of all nations. Fifthly, we're committed to one another relationships, to walking with each other and equipping and maturing everyone to be like Christ through family groups. We call this discipling sometimes. Sixth, we're committed to building strong families based on biblical values. Seventhly, we believe that all our resources that God has blessed us with belong to God. We're stewards. And we're committed to sacrificially and cheerfully use them to build the local church, to support missions, and to serve the community. These are our core values and beliefs, brothers and sisters, that I would encourage us to reflect on. And they've been posted up in our website if you'd like to take a look at it. For this year, in continuation of our mission statement, All to Know God and Make God Known to All, the theme is... One for all and all for one. Now, many of us of you may have heard of this slogan. It's from the Three Musketeers, where the slogan is all for one and one for all. And the idea is that we'll be there for each other. Um, we'll do anything to protect each other. But as disciples, we know we cannot depend on man uh, to save us, but only on God. And so instead of the Three Musketeers, we look to Jesus. And so we made it the opposite. Firstly, one for all. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, verse 14 says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. This is the first part. The heart of Jesus is what we want to strive for. As people who are convinced that he gave his life for us all, this love is what compels us to live the life we do. And the second part, all for one, uh, in verse 15, reads, And he died for all, that those who live no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Now, as all of those who he died for, we also die and no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us and was raised. What we do, we do for Christ. Who we are, we are for Christ. Ours is not a humanistic organization, but a Christ-centered family. It does not mean that we're perfect, but we will never stop striving for Jesus' sake. In light of this theme, we have made a few plans as a church for the year 2021. Starting from Jan 1st, as you are aware, we're having our Quiet Time series on the Minor Prophets. This is to help us learn the heart of God and to have a heart for God, to listen to Him, the voice of God unmuted. Secondly, 
our focus is this, this year is to strengthen disciples. You know, discipling young Christians classes. We need to do a better job maturing our young disciples. Now, if you are a young disciple, it is just the beginning of your journey. There's so much that God wants to see happen in your life, starting from within you. We're going to be offering church-wide uh, teaching for our young Christians. I want to encourage all the young Christians to take part in this. Um, we're going to be evaluating how we can implement discipling as we have lost its focus. Uh, another area um, is shepherding so that we can strengthen people, training and uh, appointing shepherds to make sure that our people are taken care of and are maturing in their faith. We're going to be equipping uh, the family group leaders um, as another area that we want to work on. We're putting a, a book together, a handbook, uh, and a training plan to help us lead our groups effectively. Um, considering what is happening uh, now, we also want to help start grief groups. Uh, there's many in our congregation and out who have faced grief this past year. We need to help those who went through loss of a loved one. And uh, Dr. Timothy Summerlin um, will be training people to help those, uh, help these groups to handle and face the pain and loss that they experienced. Youth and, other, uh, youth and family is another area uh, that we want to grow in. Uh, you know, this past year, we're so proud of Kevin Pavitra, who spearheaded the Timothy Conference. Uh, which is a conference for the leaders in our congregations who are under 40 years old. Um, we also had campus and teens join to catch a dream for God. Uh, and when it comes to youth and family, we want to do more to equip our parents to raise up their children. Um, we also want to have more teamwork with the youth and family ministry, the sector leaders, and the parents and the kids. We're also uh, planning, uh, considering the times that we live in, uh, on having purity groups. We know how much this is needed in our time. Shaijus and Bina are willing to train people who will oversee these groups to help us strive towards purity, uh, sexual purity in our lives. We do not know how long this pandemic will continue and what the impact will be in the world. But we do know our God. We know that He has called us, and He has set us apart for His service. Brothers and sisters, let us grow in our prayer life and learn to pray the disciples' prayer. Let us make sure that we begin the year walking intimately with God and making sure to follow the Quiet Time series. Let us not allow the problems and challenges that will come our way to make us more self-focused, but let us fix our eyes on Jesus who died for us, and decide that we will live for Him and for each other, one for all and all for one in 2021. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much, Roger, for teaching us one of the very basic element of Christianity is to go to God and pray. This is the best thing a Christian can do is just to surrender to God. 2020 has been an unforgettable year. A lot has happened. Our faith is tested in this year. A lot of us have gone through financial, emotional, family challenges, and it has been a difficult year. But really encouraged by the faith of all the disciples that how we together stood strong and fought the challenges that were laid before us. 2021, is going to bring lots of hope as Roger shared in his sermon that many programs are lined up and how it is going to help us to be strong as a Christian and help the people around us to be more and more strong with our new theme is one for all and all for one. And that's going to be a time, uh, an opportunity for all of us to serve and be together with one another. A prayer request uh, uh, for Deepu's mom who was diagnosed as the first, first stage cancer. And I want to request uh, everyone to please pray for Deepu who serves in editing the video for the English service consistently for 
several months since the pandemic started. Sam, our brother, lost his father. Um, please remember him and his entire family in prayer. Um, he got baptized a couple of months ago, so it's such a great joy for him to be with the Lord. But please remember his entire family into your prayers. In 2021, we will continue to have um, online services. So please continue to participate, invite your friends. Minor Prophets is an exciting uh, quiet time series that have been issued. So please obtain a copy and enjoy reading about Minor Prophets. And there is so much to learn and to see how God's plan is fulfilled through these prophets. The great news for young uh, Christian we are going to start young Christian classes uh, from this Monday for all the disciples who got baptized in 2019 and 2020. And if anyone else also wants to participate, you are most welcome because there is never an age to learn the basic foundation uh, of being a Christian. So more information to follow, please reach out to your family group uh, leaders. And I want to request all the family group leaders to invite, encourage uh, your young Christian to participate in this meeting. And this is going to really help them. The other great thing that we are going to do in 2021 is the grief counseling and uh, trained trainer workshop is getting organized. So if you believe that uh, you've been gifted to counsel people and help people to come out of their grief, um, there is an expert who is going to train a bunch of disciples who will in turn help many other Christians. So if you are interested, please contact uh, Mark Pichumatu and Jasmine Pichumatu and enroll yourself for Train the Trainer program. Another reminder to continue to contribute to the needs of poor in the city, needs of our brothers and sisters, and continue to contribute to the church. You all have done a phenomenal job in 2020 by being sacrificial giver. And we really want to encourage for your generosity to take care of the needs that you see in front of us. Let's be for one another in 2021. Let's end with a word of prayer. Father, we are so grateful that you are our God. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you so much for just taking care of all our needs. In the times of trouble, God, we felt you. When we were alone, you were holding our hands. God, when we went through the challenges, you are there encouraging us, taking care of our families, taking care of our friends, taking care of our needs. Thank you, God, for all the ways that you worked in our life. Father, we as a Christian look forward for 2021 to be a glorious year, Father. God, the year where we will be together, where we will be there for one another, Father. We will step out of our comfort zone and we will go and help each and every brothers and sisters who are in need. I pray, Father, that we all will serve each other and in turn we will serve you, Father. We love you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Wish you all a very, very happy new year.